Hello, and welcome to Reawaken the Dream, a course for the writer mom or anyone who has to write in little fragments of time because you don't have enough big blocks of time to sit down and write. We are in lesson 27, and we are covering our 22nd and 23rd character traits. This is the one and only lesson of the whole course where we cover two character traits in a single lesson. You'll see why very soon. We are working on a very practical tool, the character profile tool that will give us the power of living characters. Let's take just a moment or two to review our character trait from last week, which was trustworthiness. Trustworthiness is the our behaving in a right manner even when no one is looking. Trustworthiness is tested in small things. Our animal model is the cuckoo bird who lays its eggs in the nest of another bird. Not particularly trustworthy. The law state is every form of corruption imaginable. Every type of greed, every type of dishonesty, all come under trustworthiness. And if you want to make your reader doubt one of your characters, just give them a hint of trustworthiness. The victory state of trustworthiness is doing what is right, even when no one is watching. Trustworthiness is an interesting virtue in that the scale is such that the slightest hint is very serious for your reader. It's like loyalty in that regard. So it gives you something that you can use as a flag to indicate that this character might be your villain very early on in circumstances that otherwise might seem quite innocent. Trustworthiness concluded the subgroup which bears its name of empathy, along with responsibility, sincerity, and loyalty. It, as a whole, that makes the trustworthiness subgroup of the empathy traits. Well, today, as I indicated, we have two character traits, magnificence and magnanimity. Hmm. Those are character traits that we don't talk about every day. We might have a general sense of magnificence, but magnanimity isn't a word we throw around every day. Well, we'll be doing the analysis soon enough, but let's start with the scenarios, and maybe you'll get an idea of what these two character traits mean and begin to realize why we need to talk about them within the same lesson. Timothy, maybe we should call him Timothy, was not one to desire to have anyone pay him a special attention. He did his job well. He'd been in the same job for years and years and years. His motto was, put your head down, and do the work. He was in the budgets and forecasts department of the finance group, and his boss frequently had meetings with the president of the company. Ooh, that wasn't anything that Timothy wanted. He did not want to walk the carpeted halls. Fortunately, his job was just to crank out the reports that his boss took to the president. Well, one of his reports was causing him a lot of grief. There was a small dollar overrun, not a dollar a month that you'd even look twice at, but it was a huge percentage, like more than double the budgeted amount. $1,200 instead of $600 in that size corporation? Who'd pay it any attention? But that was a line item that had never before been at all out of whack. Timothy wanted to just 
shove it under the rug and not worry about it and just put in the report. He was very sure that no one would even notice that size of a difference. But something bothered him. He kind of knew in his gut that it was important. Ugh. Magnificence, the struggle. Well, I don't know if it was loyalty or responsibility, probably a little bit of mixture, both. Timothy had a sense of loyalty to the company, certainly, but he had a strong sense of loyalty to his boss, who had always treated him very fairly. So Timothy decided that he couldn't just push that budget discrepancy under the rug and wait until the next quarter. He had to go talk to the Office of Government Compliance. He made an appointment with Mark, an appropriately junior member of the office, even though his role in budgets and forecasts could have landed him an appointment with the department head. He chose Mark. Well, he was sure Mark would know the reasons behind the numbers anyway, maybe even better than his boss. So off he went to talk to Mark. Well, Mark looked at it and said, hmm, yeah, um, yeah, I kind of wondered about that and didn't think too much. Uh, yeah. So they got out the background numbers. It turns out that a new government regulation had just gone into effect. And in point of fact, that little budget discrepancy was going to grow and grow and grow and grow. By the time they looked at the end of year numbers, the two of them just whistled. It was threatening to dwarf the entire budget for the Office of Government Compliance of the company. Well, something happened to Timothy on his way back to his cubicle. He started thinking about, hmm, somebody in the company would now know him. He'd probably get a raise, maybe get a bonus. Oh, he would get some recognition. Wow, I'd finally be somebody in the company. Something was nagging him. And about, what about Mark? What about Mark? Mark? Mark wouldn't even have looked at it if I hadn't, if I hadn't talked about it. Uh, Mark knew where to look. Mark knew all about the regulations. Oh, did I really have to bring up Mark? Magnanimity, the struggle. Maria was as great a gymnast as the coach had ever seen. In practice, she ex executed all of her routines flawlessly and stuck every landing. She was a coach's dream, except at the elite gymnastic meets. She'd been spectacular all the way up to achieving elite status, and all of a sudden, something happened. It would usually turn out that early in the elite meet, she'd have some kind of a disastrous performance fall off the balance beam, land on her butt on the floor exercise, miss the upper bar on the uneven parallel bars. Don't even mention the vault. What was a coach to do? Could it be the music of the other people's floor routine interrupting her in the middle of her flow of conscious? Was it the big audience that the elite gymnasts gathered that weren't there for the intermediates? Well, maybe not, because it seemed as soon as she turned in that horrible performance, suddenly, in the meet, she executed all the rest of her routines as flawlessly as when she was in the gym. Nope. Maria could be a fantastic gymnast if only she could get over her fear of winning. Magnificence, the struggle. Martin 
was not ungrateful. He had tremendous gratitude for the people who helped him get his project through and see it to successful fruition. They had put in a lot of late nights, and every time his crew was there, he bought them dinner, he praised them tremendously, and when the project came out and became a fantastic success, everybody got a fantastic bonus, more than generous. But put a mic in front of Martin's face, and it was Martin, Martin, Martin. He had never even know there was another person who helped him bring his invention to success. Martin. Magnanimity. The lost state. Well, in our analysis, we'll see that these two are pretty intertwined, but we're going to sort of try to deal with them separately, but we'll find that we really can't. So let's pretend we can deal with them separately. We're going to do the analysis of magnificence. Magnificence, as you probably guessed, is the push for greatness, to be all that you can be. That is the push of magnificence. Our animal model is the young eagle who's taking his first long flight, taking his soar into the air above the trees, above the pond, his first long flight, feeling the aspect of soaring. Magnificence is a peculiar character trait. All of the other character traits that we've studied the whole course, or that we will study the rest of the course, even though we only have like five more, the struggle has always been a struggle to achieve it, to get there. Magnificence, it's the struggle is a struggle to tamp it down, to keep it from bursting forth. You see, inside of all of us is a push to be all that we can be, a push to greatness however that is appropriately defined for us or for our characters. And if we are struggling against it, then there is an equal opposite push to keep it down, to not let it out. That is the, the true struggle of magnificence. A double expenditure of energy. Push, 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 push. A huge waste of energy. In fact, double the energy that it would be needed to achieve the magnificence in the first place. And what is magnificence? That doesn't mean, you know, becoming a world famous, whatever it is, and rich and whatever, and everybody in the world knows your name. No. Magnificence can come to fruition in the humblest circumstances, and in the quietest of lives. Magnificence is letting go of the urge to greatness within us and within our individual circumstances. So let's take a look. We've looked at the struggle. Let's take a look at the lost state of magnificence. The loss state of magnificence is holding the lid on greatness. Keeping that lid down, keeping that greatness from coming out. Could another lost state be misdirecting the greatness? Like the villain who achieves great power, who's using magnificence for all the wrong purposes? Well, it's a lost state, that's sure. That's totally, surely a lost state, but not a lost state of magnificence. It's a lost state of the one we're about to cover, magnanimity. And we'll see that very, very soon, like one more page. So therefore, the victory state is letting go, letting greatness go free within us. 
And we don't know until we let it go free. We don't know where it's going to lead us. But one thing that we do know is that we want to have magnanimity along with it and don't go letting it loose until magnum, magnanimity is ready for action. In our story, magnificence is all about our hero accepting the grand challenge. If you're doing any kind of an epic story, and in fact, most stories that are really uplifting do include magnificence as an element in the story. Now we'll take a look at the analysis of magnanimity. And then when it comes to modifiers and groups, we'll put the two together. One of the things we see right away with magnanimity is that part of its struggle is to shepherd and guide magnificence. In a way, you almost could say that magnanimity is the guardian angel of magnificence. The job of magnanimity is to keep uh, magnificence in check and guided directly to, a, to our highest purpose and not to get sidetracked into some other thing like greed or whatever it might get sidetracked into, but for achieving our highest purpose. Our animal model of magnanimity is, this is a tree, guys. And this is a bird's nest with a mother bird and a fledgling bird. Okay, now that I've told you, it should be clear, right? So the mother bird is encouraging the little bird to take off to its first flight. And that illustrates another aspect of, of magnanimity. Another task of magnanimity is to encourage others to greatness. And of course, to share the, the credit for, the, for greatness when greatness comes to fruition. The lost state of magnanimity is when magnanimity lets magnificence go off the rails and become misdirected. Another lost state is failure to encourage others. And this can reach such an extreme when, when magnanimity is really, really in trouble, where our character actually suffers pain when others around them are successful. That is a serious lost state of magnanimity. And the more, most obvious lost state of all, not sharing the credit where credit is due. The victory state is helping magn magnificent achieve its higher purpose, encouraging others and experiencing joy in their success and sharing the credit. Now, one thing before I turn the page, it's an incredible shift. Magnanimity has it, the same kind of giant energy shift that you see in magnificence. Remember in magnificence, magnificence was pushing up, resistance was pushing down. You had this big ball of energy that was getting wasted. Well, you see a similar shift here difference between feeling pain on other success and feeling joy in other success is an enormous boost in joy of life, in general happiness, in just the satisfaction of, of being alive. Because there's so much more success out there. If five of you who are friends all have equal success, then you have collectively Five times the joy if you can all share the joy with one another. Whereas if you're all guarding your own success and only your own can feel joyful, then you have four times pain for only one time joy. So that's another clear huge shift. And uh, magnanimity is a tremendous character trait to work on for general life happiness. So now let's take a look together, magnanimity and magnificence, We'll look at them together for 
the modifiers and the group. The modifiers of res all uh, character traits in the resilience group are scale and resistance. Scale is a very interesting modifier when it comes to magnificence. If it's our hero taking on the great quest, the scale is rather obvious. It's the value of the quest. And that's always true of magnificence. The scale of magnificence is what might be achieved if, the, if magnificence is allowed to express itself. But what about the scale of magnanimity? Interestingly, the scale of magnanimity is the scale of the magnificence that it is shepherding. It shares the same scale as magnificence. That's another way in which these two, although they're completely separate character traits, they're really, really linked. And we know they're separate because a person can be long in one and short on the other. A person can have a base trait of magnanimity, ready to share credit with everyone, delighting in everyone's joys and success, and just happy as can be with everyone's joy, and might have magnificence as a pinnacle trait. <laughs> but don't put me on the spot. They're completely separate character traits, and yet they're just tightly interwoven. What about resistance when it comes to magnanimity and magnificence? Or you might be saying, wait a minute, I don't remember resistance coming up so much with the other members of the resilience group. I remember talking about scale. I don't remember emphasizing resistance. Well, when you think about it, the other traits that we've had so far in the resilience group have all been part of the courage subgroup. Constancy, going forward day after day after day towards your goals. Perseverance, dealing with the obstacle in your path and going forward despite the obstacle. And patience, enduring the suffering of the present moment. Well, we didn't have to say very much about resistance because if you got to the point where your journey ended at the top of a cliff and you had to jump off the cliff into a little pool of water at the bottom, which you hope is pretty deep, you don't have to wonder where the resistance is coming from. The resistance is the obstacle you're overcoming. The resistance is the tedium you're enduring. The resistance is the suffering you're powering through. It's smack dab in your face. But what is the resistance of magnificence? What is the resistance of magnanimity? Put a pin in that, as Victoria likes to say, because we're going to come back to that in just a moment. So but first, we're going to do a quick finishing up of the resilience group. And I do mean finishing up, because here we are. We've added two character traits. They belong to a subgroup all by themselves. It's the power subgroup. And this closes resilience. At this point, we have now completed the resilience group utterly. That's two groups we've completed. We completed the insight group, and now we've completed the resilience group. We have left, after today's lesson, we have three empathy traits and two balance traits, and that's all. You might be thinking, hmm, wait a minute, lesson 27, and, and we got five traits to go, hmm, that's 32. I thought this was a 35 lesson course. What's, what are the last three lessons about? I'll clue you in next week. We've got enough on our plate today. Next week, I'll tell you what those last three lessons are going to be about. They're definitely in the plan. So, now that we've finished our closing review of the resilience group, let's take a look at resistance 
when it comes to magnificence and magnanimity. When we're struggling with magnanimity, when magnanimity is here in a rudder position, I can't get it to go. Um, at this point in time, what we're struggling with is a struggle either to be joyful in someone else's success or the struggle to be unwilling to share the credit or the struggle to be unwilling to control magnificence and get it back in line towards working at the higher purpose. Stop thinking at the, about the gold at the end of the rainbow. Be thinking about why you're going to the end of the rainbow to save the kingdom. So the challenges of magnanimity, when you're experiencing resistance to magnanimity, you need to be looking at character traits that can help you support magnanimity, which would be if you're struggling to ha share the credit, think about gratitude. Can you reinforce gratitude? Can you help? Because if, if you can help other related character traits strengthen, we've seen so many times when we saw the character trait transitions that when we took one of the other character traits and strengthened it and saw it drop into the anchor position, then the trait that was in the wing position drops down into the rudder. So if you're struggling with magnanimity and you're saying, I'm not getting where, I'm not getting anywhere, I'm not getting anywhere, maybe it's not actually in the rudder position. Maybe it's in the wing position. And maybe what you need to be doing is work, work on gratitude, work on kindness, work on some of the other character traits that you can strengthen such that magnanimity will then drop into the rudder position where you can tackle it head on. The real fun one to talk about today, though, is when magnificence is, the resistance is concerning magnificence. And I'm just going to, not going to commit to where magnificence is at this moment because that's one of the factors that we need to talk about. Self-help books and the great gurus of productivity and those who tackle resistance head on by name, seldom tackle magnificence head on by name. They'll talk about the resistance, but they don't say resistance to what. But it's almost always resistance to magnificence. There seems to be something in society about not telling anybody that you've decided to let your magnificence go free. So, but you may have noticed that when it comes to the self-help books, sometimes they work wonders and sometimes they don't provide any help at all. Let's take, for example, um, Stephen Pressfield's book, um, Do the Work. He talks about, he said, you're, there's a knight facing a dragon. You're the knight, resistance is the dragon. And your job is to name the dragon and slay the dragon. Well, if, in fact, your magnificence is sitting here as a rudder trait, and the resistance is directly what you what you need to work on, then that self-help book can just be the ticket that you need to sit down and do the work and make it happen. But just like we saw a moment ago with magnanimity, if magnificence is actually a wing trait for you and you want to achieve this, maybe you're creating a new business or you're writing a novel or you're trying to do something and you long for it, in your heart, you long for it, and you reach for it, you grasp for it, and you never get there. Maybe it's a, a wing trait. And if it's a wing trait, no amount of going at magnificence and the resistance surrounding it directly is going to do you a bit of good. Instead, you'll need to work on the related traits 
that might be in the rudder position for you. If you're having trouble with constancy, then work on constancy. And maybe that's the one that will enable magnificence to shift down into the rudder position. So we talk an enormous amount about resistance around magnificence in our society and in books and in self-help books. It's seldom named, but it's present. And it is a constant theme. And we should all be ready to release our greatness. We shouldn't let anyone tell us that we can't do the thing that is in our heart to do. So let that magnificence go. When you take the lid off, the energy to achieve it will be released. It will be released. It's already there being tamped down. But be very, very careful. Don't go taking the lid off the energy of magnificence until you've had a reality check and you know that your magnanimity is on straight. Because if you can't share the credit, if you can't go for your highest purpose that might come with some other reward and you're going for the other reward instead, you've got to get your magnanimity on straight. Otherwise, that magnificence isn't going to give you an ounce of happiness. So that is our lesson for the week. We don't have a review segment in part because this has been a double episode. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.